Good day, you're welcome to another edition of Starting and Managing Your Business Amid COVID. We are coming closer to the end of this series of uh, seminar. I believe it's been of immense blessing to you because of all you have learned as far as doing business or managing your own business is concerned. My name is Dele Ayimibo. I want to thank the Pastor for the privilege of being a blessing to you. I believe this will be a turning point in the life of many as long as soon as uh, we're able to put some of the things we are learning into practice. Father, we thank you this wonderful morning for coming this session into your hands. Open our eyes and our mind to be able to plan effectively and come to raising capital for our business in Jesus' name. Amen. So now we're discussing planning. You know, um, the planning we are looking at today is uh, writing the business plan. Next week, we'll be looking at raising capital. But today is writing the business plan, having done your business model canvas. Writing the business plan, having done your business model canvas. Now, this is assuming that a number of us have a job and we have to exit our job sometimes in future to be able to do something for ourselves. That's the assumption. Now, but if we don't have a job, I've already talked about the fact that it's not a bad place to be in the sense that not having a job and not having a business and trying to get something doing is a very, very, it's very possible. And I've spoken about how, I think in the last two episodes that I spoke about that, and you can pick that up to be able to check. Um, so today we are looking at exit time planning, personal financial planning, personal development plan, business plan, and worst case scenario plan. Then from next we'll be discussing raising capital. Exit time planning. Now, you know, I left bank in 2010, that's about 10 years ago. And um, I'm just sharing here what are some of the things I did when I was trying to exit the banking sector. And one of those things is um, planning ahead. You know, look, because either we like it or not, at some point we're going to leave that job, at some point, either voluntarily or compulsorily by retirement, retrenchment or resignation, we're going to leave. These are reality of life for us. No matter how much we believe and hope and pray, that you will live. These are just reality of life. As long as it's not your own business, you will have to leave. Hence, the need to have an exit time plan. Hence, the need to have an exit time plan. Hence, the need to have an exit time plan. The time you are setting should be drawn, should be written down rather, and it should be, it should also be, be long enough for personal development. So if I want to leave, I've discovered myself or discover what I want to do, but I need to develop myself. Remember when I was talking about creating something from nothing and the fact that if we are going to be able to create something from nothing, you must begin to add picture in your mind, ideas in your mind. And that is when life breaks in your mind. But that light will only break when you have studied and learned enough. When you have studied and learned enough. And that's talking about the personal development. So you must read. So you have enough time to read. So if I'm living in five years, I know within that five years, these are the things I must read. These are the things I must know. These are the area I must cover. Within the next five years, that I'll be doing before I leave. Then researching an internship on business. Apart from the reading and learning, I should also research about the business, talk to people doing the business, engage them, and probably do internship with them, render free service to them, maybe over the weekend or during holiday, just to learn. Just to learn. Then writing business plan. I'll be giving a template later on on writing business plan so that it can make it easier for those of us that are not accountants and business people. So at least you have a template to work with and you can then read about different segments and know how to, but you still need to need to work with an accountant for your cash flow projection and a number of other financials that you need to put into place in your own business plan. But before you get to that point, you should have read enough, learned enough, have your business model canvas before you can begin to write a business plan. You know what writing does for you for business plan and business model canvas is that 
you want to do a business, but there are some things you're not thinking about. When you begin to write, those things you're not thinking about become obvious. The area that you have gaps become obvious. And that will make you to begin to do something about it because you, 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 will be, you will be forced to think about what you probably would not have naturally think about or thought about about that business. But you are now forced to think about it. <laughs> Exit time planning. Exit time planning should cover personal development, research, and internship, writing business plan, savings to cover family expenses for at least one year. And I was doing this session for one of the director, one of the band. I did a, a personal uh, session we had uh, some years back. And she, she called another ED of that band who was also, the, both of them were planning retirement already. And so they were together with me and we had this session together. And she said, Billy, I think it's better to have for two years, to stay for two years. <laughs> I said, okay, that's okay. So if you want to do one year or two years, that's fine. So it's savings to cover family expenses, school fees, rent, if you don't have a house already, um, basic family expenses, upkeep of the home, and then minimum capital and debt of the business. So that means, let's say what I need for this business is 2.5 million or 2.4 million. Let's say it's 2.4 million. Let's say what I need for my own family expenses is 1.6 million for, for, expense for two years. So that's about 2.4, 1.6, that's 4 million now. Now, and let's say I earn 150K and I want to save 50K every month for this. In a year, I will raise 600,000. In five years, I will raise 3 million. In six years, I will raise 3.6. In seven years, I will raise 4.2. I need about 4 million, right? It's good I raised 4.2 because of inflation. So 4.2 in seven years. So that means I'm saving 50,000 every month for seven years. And if you possibly invest it also in a secure investment, even if the return is not so much, 4.2. So that means for the next six years, I plan to leave banking, oil and gas, uh, manufacturing, whatever sector I find myself in the next six years or seven years. in the next seven years. Within that seven years, I will have raised the savings for, my, for the business, savings for, done the same for the business, minimum capital to settle the business, saving for the family expenses. And I will have enough time to write business plan, to do a lot of research and internship and personal development. You know what I discovered? The real challenge for us as human beings is that many never have plan. Because seven years, you think it's long. You'll be shocked that seven years will soon be over. So, and it's your plan. If you want to modify it, bring it forward, take it, extend it, that's, the, that's not a problem. But if, as human beings, we should not be living subconsciously. We should be living consciously. As human beings, we should not be living subconsciously. We should be living consciously. Many people live subconsciously. That's one of the biggest challenge we have as human beings. Many people live subconsciously. Many people are not living consciously. It's sad, but that's the reality of our life. People are living, people are not living consciously. And if you are not living consciously, the implication of that is that you will not be able to maximize your life. You will not have a plan. You just think you have arrived because you have a car, you have a house, you are comfortable. And there's no plan for the future. Regarding your calling, regarding your life, regarding your finance, regarding every area of your life, there must be a plan. There must be something. So every day there's something you're working towards. Every day there's something you're working towards. And anytime you have those plans, my recommendation is ensure you don't take God out of that plan. You can't plan for yourself because you were not sent here for yourself. You were sent here for a reason and for a season. So you can't really plan for yourself. You must plan with the, with the, with the, uh, the boss that sent you here in mind. What has he created you for? What, is he, what has he called you to do? 
those things in creator and calling for you should be part of your plan. So for example, if I believe I'm called to be an engineer to provide solution to a particular area of human problem, and I believe by doing that, I'll be able to create a platform to reconcile men to God and be a blessing to mankind on the earth. If I believe that's not my calling, so during this period, I should be acquiring skill, competence, developing myself. While saving the money, I'm also developing myself on one hand. The next thing is personal financial plan. I've already talked about that in the last one I talked about. Uh, add the sum of the amount needed to cover your family expenses for at least one year, and the minimum capital needed to set up the business, and divide it by, the no, by monthly contribution. That will give you the number of years, like the case I just cited, 4 million divided by 50, that will give you about seven years to get 4.2 million. Invest the fund in, with fund managers, insurance, life insurance, where you have, you will not have access to it no matter, no matter what until the set time. So you must learn to save. And in saving, my recommendation is this. If you are the type that is not disciplined, for me, if I want to save money for something, I can put it in an account and I, can, I won't touch it, no matter the financial pressure, I won't touch it. No matter the financial pressure, I won't touch it. Because the way my mind, I've developed myself by God's grace, to be able to condition my mind is that when I'm looking for money, I don't even remember that money is there because you already have a purpose. Now, for some of us, I'm not that gifted. So my recommendation is put it in an account where there is no ATM, no online transfer, no checkbook, and the, let it be a bank that have few branches. So if you want to withdraw, you have to walk to the branch or travel to the branch. It's so far. So it's so even discouraging some of the new generation banks that they don't have, they have very one or two or three branches in Lagos. <laughs> That's my recommendation. Or you put it in an insurance and pay every month an insurance, a, a life insurance. I do life insurance and I do life insurance, I do education insurance. Um, so do life insurance. Life insurance is, um, it has two benefits. It's like the savings to, for the future. So for example, I did a life insurance that in, in, in another 20 years, in another 20 years, if I choose not to work, I can be earning a particular amount every month without doing anything in another 20 years. You know, and in the case of demise, your family have something to fall back on. So that way, it's a saving. So, and after five years, I can say I need it and I will get it back with some interest on it. So, I mean, it's just, it's a secure means of savings such that you can get it anytime you want it. Only that it's a process. It might take them three weeks to get it for you, to bring it for you, but you will get it. 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 You know? So it is so critical and so important, I must say, for us to be able to plan and plan and, and be able to save that money. Save that money. Save that. You must have, if you receive your salary, you should have a tight separated, benevolent separated, then your family upkeep, and then some other expenses for the month, and then your savings. And it's recommended you should try to save at least 30% of your income, at least 30% of your income. It's very important. It's very, very important. So financial planning. Now, personal development plan. It's been recommended about four areas of skill you must acquire. Many people focus on number, the T, technical skill. So that's the doing the business itself. But you know what? There are other skills you must master. Analytical skill. You must be an A thinker, analytical skill. You must be a C thinker, creative skill. You must be a T thinker, technical skill. You must be a P thinker, people skill. The problem for many is this. People focus on the T. They want to learn the business. But the business still did not survive. Because the business, what you need, like a tailor, you learned when to learn the technical skill of tailoring or fashion designing. You didn't learn analytical skill. 
Here is a business opportunity. How do you analyze it and dimension your risk and mitigate your risk? How do you analyze it and dimension your risk and mitigate your risk? Analytical skill. Analytical skill. Analytical skill help you to analyze. In analyzing, you compare. You compare. You are looking at the pros and cons of your marketing strategy. Pros and cons of your uh, method of production. Pro, as in you are analyzing and checking out which is most preferred, which has the better return, which should I consider out of all the options available to you. Analytical skill. Then, C thinker, critical and creative skill. You must realize that we're in the fast paced world. You must be a creative thinker. You must be bringing something new to the marketplace, something different, something exceptional, something that not just anyone will be able to do. Then you can see that ah, there's something different about that business. There's something different about because you are very, very creative. And let me tell you something. God created the world. He created every human being. Each human being has a unique fingerprint. Each human being has unique DNA. Each human being is unique in a lot of ways. Our God is a creative God. Now, if you now have a relationship with that God as, and you have become his sons and daughters spiritually, then you have access to the creative ability of God. But what I realized is that many are not tapping into that creative ability. And one of the ways to tap into it is to do spiritual activities that invite his presence. And when you can feel his presence begin to think about those things you want to do. And also begin to make your request. When you can feel the awesomeness of his presence, when you feel the goosebumps, if you understand what I mean, you can feel the awesomeness of his presence. Then you want to tap into creative ability of God and you'll be shocked at what you begin to see and do. But your creative ability will be strengthened and empowered when you are given to many. It will be strengthened and empowered when you are given to many. It will be strengthened and empowered when you are given to many. So it's extremely, extremely, extremely important to be a creative person. Then the technical skill, I won't talk more about that. That's what many people focus on. That's what many people focus on. That's what people focus on that a lot when they are doing anything. Why? Because, I mean, it's the low hanging fruit. In fact, you won't say you know that business until you are able to do that, actually. You only claim, you can only claim you know that business when you are able to do that. If you are not able to do that, you don't know that business. <laughs> so if you don't, if you can't do that, you don't know that business. So the only way you can claim you know that business is that you can, you have that skill. So everybody go for that technical skill, which is not bad in itself, only that if you focus only on the technical skill, you will be leaving out another huge opportunity you have to grow that business and expand that business through analytical skill, through creative skill, and lastly, through people skill, or rather people management skill. People skill, or rather people management skill. Many businesses have issues because of this last one, people skill. Some people cannot manage people. And, and, and it's sad, really, because when you look at us as Christians, one of the things we should naturally possess is being able to manage people. If you possess the fruit of the spirit, there's no way you won't be able to manage people because you will love people. So you will not be too harsh on people. Even if you, even if you rebuke for what people have done, you are still able to do like he says, 
the rod and the staff to comfort me. So there is a rod and there's a staff. <laughs> so in one hand you rebuke, for in another hand you, you literally you easily forget and move on, and you don't take it against them all the time. You should be able to manage people, make the people happy, make them feel belong. Make them feel belong, make them feel among, make the people very happy. Let them feel a sense of ownership. Train them, support them, show interest in their personal life. Because you need a team, you can't do it alone. You need a team, you can't do it alone. You need a team, you cannot do it alone. And you need to be able to engage your team very well in such a manner to help your team achieve their objective. You should be able to manage people's emotions. Rebuke people, but also appreciate them. And let the appreciation be more than the rebuke. Let the people feel happy, excited, working with you. Let it be that they, even though you are not able to pay much because you are just starting, but their life is better because you are training them, you are helping them, you are training their life and their progress and in their health. I even recommend you do health insurance so that they, because they call that there may be people in pure causes insurance. I mean, health issue. Health insurance, if you can do health insurance for them, that would be great as the business grow. People management skill. Before I close today, let's talk about the business plan. The thing is you cover, but we'll be looking at it in detail later on. This involves writing the details of the business, and this includes the problem to be solved, the targeted customers, the competitor, the SWOT and PEST analysis. What is SWOT analysis? What are your strengths as an individual and as a business? What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? Those are internal factors. Then what are the threats to the business and the opportunities? Those are the external factors. Strength, what do you have going for you? What do you have better than others? Strength, your skill, your training, your personality. Weaknesses, where are the weaknesses? What is it that this business lack that you need to probably rely on someone else to do? What are your weaknesses? What are the skills you don't have as much as others? What are your weaknesses? And then, not just your weaknesses, then opportunities. What opportunity do you have ahead? What is the market size? Who are those that are interested in what you are doing? Opportunities and threat. <laughs> threat. Threat. What are the threats to this business? What are the threats to this business? Is it a government policy? What is likely to be threatening? Then pest analysis. What are the political situation in the country and how does it affect the business? What are the economic situation in the country and how does it affect the business? What are the social cultural issues in the country and how does it affect the business? Social cultural issue in the country, how does it affect the business? And then is there any technology? that you need to acquire. Then in addition to that, actually, some people have called it PESTEL. PESTEL. Environmental issue, legal issue around the business. P-E-S-T-L. Environmental issue, legal issue around the business. Now, the ACTP thing that I talk about is the area of development. So please don't focus on technical development, please. As you do the kind of development, read book on creativity. Read book on creativity. Read book on uh, people management. People management. Read book on people management. People management. How do we manage people? How do we manage people effectively and efficiently? 
read book on that. You should be able to manage people. I strongly believe one of the things that Fruit of the Spirit should do for you is being gentle with people, is to be able to love people, is to create an atmosphere of joy and happiness in the environment, is to be peaceful. You should be keeping malice with your staff. <laughs> you should be keeping malice with your staff. <laughs> if anything goes wrong, speak to them immediately and sort it out right there and there. You can be keeping malice with your staff. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. You should also be able to endure some pain. You know, there was a time I had a staff. And sincerely, in the last 10 years, this has been the only guy that remained with me. We did a project and he, he made a mistake and we lost some money, some good sum of money. Well over a million, actually. And um, of course, naturally, it's to sack. But I refuse to sack because I'm asking myself if we sack this guy, this knowledge, this understanding, what he has learned from this mistake, how, why we like it's like I'm investing in other people's business because it will have gone somewhere else and be able to use that. <laughs> and you know what I discovered? Anytime I want to do any project right now, he's the only pessimistic person in the office. He's very pessimistic. That experience makes him to look at things so critically. Eh? When I'm so optimistic, is the one that drags me back, that makes me to see the loophole I'm not seeing. And in the last 10 years, he's the only one that's remained. Many people have come and gone, several actually. And now he has a stake in the business. He's my actually deputy. <laughs> what am I trying to say? Managing people. It's not every time you punish. It's not every time you, you discipline. Sometimes you put yourself in the shoe. What could you have done? Maybe you would have been also happened to you. So how can't we make it a learning point for the business? Learning point for the business. The last I will not talk about the worst case scenario planning. Let me tell you how this plays out for me. When I was leading banking, one of the things I plan to do is to focus on training as far as export is concerned. I feel export business in Nigeria was not good enough, was not going enough. So that's an area to focus on. That we're not we're doing a lot in import, but alas, I was wrong. So I started doing export for like two years. I after struggling and struggling and saying that look, we're not growing the way I think we should. And I was looking at all the things happening, and I think we can do much better. So I decided to we decided to start doing training in the business plan. One of the options is to do import training, but we didn't start with it. When we started doing it, in fact, it blew up. It blew up as saying I was shocked at the level of success we recorded doing import training. Unknowing to me that the fact that people are already doing it does not mean that they know it well. And the fact that people are doing it means they have a lot of market, but I learned that through experience. What am I trying to say in essence? I'm basically trying to say that. Have options. It is bad, it is not good, it is unwise for a business to start and focus on only one. It's, on, it's very bad to focus on only one product, no way have two, three products or two, three services or product and services. You know why? Sometimes you don't know which one, even with all your research. Sometimes the market might respond in a way you least expected. Sometimes you don't know which one the market will be interested in actually. Sometimes you don't know which one the market will be interested in. The market might just be interested in other options. The market will tell you if what you have brought to the market is good enough or not. You have done all your research. You, have, you think you have done watertight business plan. Mm. Market will tell you if there is something else you missed out <laughs> that you never saw. But now when you are practicalizing, you begin to see it in the market. Market will tell you that. The 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 market will tell you that. All right. So I'll be closing now. Um, it's been another interesting session today to be able to plan having worst case scenario planning. That's one thing people that have so much faith refuse to have. I hope we are learning from that. You can, in fact, you, you should have a lot of options. Don't say you have to, you believe this will work. <laughs> it's like um, your car is defective and you believe the car will carry you to your destination and it's defective, the fuel is almost gone. Don't tempt God, please. Just do what you need to do. Do your own part so that God can do his own part. The one that is within your power, do it. Rather than believing God for what you are supposed to do. 
I said that severally that that's breaking the law of personal responsibility, which says that God will not do for you what he has given you, the internet and knowledge, wisdom, understanding to do for yourself. He will do it for you. Why? Because it's against his principles. It's against his principles. All right, thank you very much for listening again today to this session. I want to thank you, Pastor, for the privilege of giving me to be a blessing to you. And I hope this will be another opportunity to learn and be able to grow your business. Thank you very much for listening. Father, we thank you for today. We glorify your name for what we have learned. We pray for the grace to be doers of all this in your learning and not hear us only in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.